In this video, I'd like to show you how to graph an equation that's in slope-intercept form. And we've graphed equations by plotting two or three points, but whenever you have an equation in slope-intercept form, you can use the numbers, the slope and the intercept, to shorten that process. And we can see with this equation that the slope, which is the coefficient of x, is equal to a negative two-thirds. So I'm going to write that out. And the other thing that we can see is that the value of b, which is the y-intercept, the y-coordinate of it, it's equal to positive 3. And I sometimes like to call this method anchor and count because we are going to use the y-intercept, in this case where the y-value is 3, but the x-value is 0, so that's the uh, coordinates of the y-intercept, and we'll use that to anchor a point on the y-axis. And then we're going to use the slope to count. And so I'm going to look at this fraction, negative 2 thirds, and you can think of that as being a negative 2 divided by a positive 3. So we can think of this fraction not only as negative 2 thirds, but when we think of slope, we can also realize that this is rise divided by run. And so each of these quantities can be equated to one of these numbers. So if you think of a rise of negative 2, well, rise means the amount going up and down in the y direction, and negative 2 means then that we're going down. So this negative 2 will represent 2 units down. And then when I look at the denominator, the positive 3, run means the travel in the x direction, left and right, and positive 3 means that we are going to go to the right, so this will be 3 units to the right. So now I can start with that anchor point, 0, 3, and from that point I can count 2 down, so 2 units down, and then 3 units to the right. And that puts me at the point where x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1. So that's another point on the line, and I can continue to do this 2 down, 3 to the right, and so on. And then I can actually draw the line that would go through those points. And so that's how I can graph this equation using slope and y-intercept without explicitly point plotting points except for the y-intercept as your initial anchor point. And so because these numbers, the slope and the y-intercept, are written explicitly, they're very easy to see, they're readily available, using them to graph the line is usually a very quick way of graphing. Next, I'd like to look at a problems that are somewhat unusual. They're not exactly what we might expect, but we can graph them anyway. So the first is the equation y is equal to negative 3, and we are asked to find the intercepts, the slope, and the graph of this equation. So if we first turn our attention to the intercepts, Normally, I would try to find the intercepts by allowing the opposite coordinate to be equal to zero. So if I make a little chart here for my x and my y values, if I want to find the uh, y-intercept, I will let x equal zero. So letting x equal zero in this equation, and there's nowhere to plug it into. But I can say that I have just let x equal to zero, and y is equal to negative three, and these are the coordinates of two separate points, and there's no conflict here, so this is allowed. So I've just found the coordinates of an ordered pair, 0, negative 3, and because the x has been set equal to 0, this is the y-intercept. So now, looking for the x-intercept, I'll let the opposite coordinate, the y, equal 0, and now I'm trying to plug that number, y equals 0, into this original equation. And when I do that, I get 0 is equal to a negative 3. And that gives me a contradiction that's not allowed. And so this uh, value, y equals 0, is not permitted. And that means that there is no x-intercept. So this is kind of a curious situation. We can plot the y-intercept, 0, negative 3 is down here, but in order to plot this line, we need to find another point. And when we look back at the equation, y is equal to negative 3, 
that's the only y value which is permitted. So when I choose another point, I'm going to have to let y be negative 3. And I could pick any other value of x. For example, x is equal to 2 would be allowed because x is equal to 2 does not produ uh, produce a contradiction or any conflict here. And so I have this ordered pair 2, negative 3. So when x is positive 2, y is negative 3, I get a point down here. And as you can see, if we connect the dots, we're going to end up here with a horizontal line. So one thing to note is that this line, horizontal line, it is the exception. We usually are expecting a line that's got some slope or slant to it, but uh, this is a real line, and it connects with the idea that y is some constant number. So we found the intercepts, we found the graph of this equation, and finally if we want to go back and find the slope, there are a number of ways that we can do this. So one is that we can explicitly use the slope equation that if you have two points it's going to be y2 minus y1, so the difference in their y coordinates divided by x2 minus x1. And if we look at these two points, 0, negative 3, and 2, negative 3, our y values are negative 3. And then we have a subtraction here that comes from the formula. But we've also got a negative sign that comes from the y value. And then we will subtract or divide by the difference of the x values. So uh, one of the x values is 2, and the other is 0. So we end up with 0 in the numerator divided by a positive 2, and so that slope is going to be equal to 0. One thing that we can notice, when the slope is equal to 0, we get the horizontal line. Again, when we get the horizontal line, it connects to the equation y is equal to constant. And whenever we have this format, y is equal to a constant, thinking y is equal to slope times x plus b, slope times x is 0. If the slope is 0, that term with the x drops out, and we just have the y-intercept, which is negative 3, and we can see then that point appears down here. Next, let's move on to the other equation. So here we have the equation x is equal to a positive 2, and we'll do something similar to what we had done before. If we don't know any better, and we're trying to plot two points and using the intercepts as those points, if we let x equal 0, that'll give us the y-intercept. So plugging that into the equation, x is equal to 0, goes in this, for this value of x, but then that's set equal to 2, and we find that that is also impossible. And so that means then that there is no y-intercept. Next, when we go to try to find the x-intercept, we set the opposite coordinate, which is the y equal to 0. And when we let y equal 0, there's nowhere to plug that into the equation here because there's no value of y. And so we just explicitly write out the coordinate that we've chosen as well as the equation. There's no conflict here. And so we have this point, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. And that represents the x-intercept. So if we take a look at these points, um, there is no y-intercept, there is an x-intercept. You can kind of imagine what's happening. It's going to be the contrast of this horizontal line, and we'll get a vertical line. And if you were a little bit aware that the uh, equation x is equal to constant gives you a vertical line, we can actually just go ahead and draw that line here through the point. So that would be the shortcut. Realize that this line is parallel to the y-axis. That's why there is no y-intercept. It does pass through the x-axis at the point 2, 0, and that again gives us our x-intercept. If you're not comfortable with this shortcut, you can always go back and explicitly plot a second point here. So from the equation, we know that x is equal to 2, so we have to choose positive 2 for x, and then we can choose any value for y. For example, if y is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2, there's no conflict with our equation. So we can plot the point here, 
x is equal to 2, y is equal to positive 3, and if we had not yet drawn the line, we would have two points from which we can get that vertical line.